So welcome to the Zyvid Pro Connect demonstration, which is a hybrid meeting. We're going to be talking a lot about the hybrid uh, uh, meeting schedules that are going on these days. Uh, and we appreciate everybody coming and joining us. We've got people from all over the world, it looks like. Uh, so thank you for uh, attending our meeting today. So first things first, uh, we'd like to talk a little bit about the platform and give you kind of some instructions on how everything works. Um, we always start our programs out, and we tell uh, most of our clients to do this, is to go to full screen. If you're operating on a laptop or a computer, simply press the F11 key, and sometimes on a laptop that can be a, a different key or what have you, but just make sure if you're pressing the F11, it takes the screen to a full screen video. Uh, this does two things. At first, it, um, it kind of makes it a, a more TV experience, and uh, it does the second thing, it makes it a little tougher for you to jump over to your email while I'm speaking, so that's great. Uh, thank you for that. And the next thing is, is if you um, need any questions or any technical support, or any downloadable documents, they're found in the bottom right-hand corner uh, of the screen called our Action Center. And if you simply click there, um, a screen will slide open. You'll see Q&A, you'll see technical support. Uh, and if we have any downloadable documents, I don't know if we have any download docs today, but um, that's where it's all located. In the upper left-hand corner, there's a small X. You simply press that and it will rescind back into its location. If at any time you have any problems, simply press the F5 key, everything reloads, and you will be back with me at the right slide, at the right video moment, um, and that's it. You are now Zyvid Pro experts. So that is as easy as it is. So let's get into the content. So welcome. Today we're going to be talking about hybrid meetings, and we've got a couple of things uh, that we're going to do today. But um, first, Let's talk about the definition of hybrid meetings. Uh, we'll go through that real quick. Um, secondly, we'll talk about considerations. So most of you might be contemplating uh, what to do and how to do it. We'll cover a lot of those issues both um, at the live meeting event as well as what to do virtually. Third, we'll talk a little bit about Zyvid Pro and how it is uniquely suited to doing just that, these hybrid meetings. And then lastly, um, we've got a little bit of a surprise here. We've got a brand new product called Zyvid Pro Connect that's a new engagement tool that allows the live audience to participate in the hybrid and virtual meeting. But we'll get into that in just a moment. But first, we've got a little bit of an announcement. We are now part of the VCube organization. Um, two fantastic uh, companies have joined forces, and VCube is a worldwide web broadcast leader over in Japan. They're located in Tokyo, Japan, and they have over 600 employees, offices in Singapore, Malaysia, Japan, Europe, Asia Pac, East and Western USA. Um, we really are part now of a global organization. They're publicly held um, and they're on the Tokyo Stock Exchange. So we are really part of a global organization now and can support customers all around the world. They have over 20 years of video webcasting experience, and uh, we're just really proud to be a part of them. As for us, we're located in Philadelphia, PA. We have 50 plus employees. Um, we are from the event production industry. That's kind of our, our generations. You're gonna see a lot about um, why that's a different, uh, why that makes a difference for our, our virtual broadcasts. Um, but we are the originators of, of true engagement tools and uh, the engagement score. We'll talk a little bit about it a little later, and. Uh, um, our, our sweet spot is doing very large broadcasts as well as um, broadcasts that are com very important. So um, let's get into it. So first things first, let's talk a little bit about the definition. I've only got two slides here real quick. Um, what is a hybrid event, right? I think there's a lot of people out there speaking hybrid and you know, hybrid is all the buzz right now because people don't really know whether to have a live event due to COVID or whether to have a virtual event and you know, have it go not so well, right? So essentially, it's a blended event that offers a mix of face-to-face -face and virtual experiences simultaneously. Uh, and we are very well suited to this because we've been doing these hybrid events uh, for quite some time. Uh, and this has kind of been our origin. We, we go out on site, we work with clients, we do large-scale events, and we broadcast those live programs uh, over our Zybit Pro platform. So. Uh, looks like everybody is going along here. Oh, great, we've got some people uh, uh, joining us. 
Let's see, so some questions are coming through. All right, um, we actually polled 1,800 MPI members. Uh, uh, MPI is Meeting Planners International. Uh, and first question we asked, and we said, hey, um, you know, 70% of them believe that hybrid meetings will be important to the future of meetings. So, you know, I think they're, they're correct. I think this is now a part of the, uh, the industry. It's part of the norm, I think, for any type of event planning. 50% um, of them have never organized a hybrid event. You got a lot of rookies out there, right? So using this virtual uh, mixture in a live event is something new. And it, you know, it's a combination of AV, it's a combination of computers and internet connectivity, all of that. And it can be, it can be frustrating and, and daunting in some areas. 1,116 people said um, that the events are done in a broadcast format. So instead of using a collaborative format like Zoom or Teams or Google Hangouts or something like that, um, this broadcast format where you have one individual speaking like, like I'm doing now, um, or two or three, um, that format of going out to the, to the audience is, is preferred. 1,170 of them said that um, they did not see any change in the person attendance after adding a hybrid component. And we'll talk about that in a later slide, but I think this is one of the, the um, uh, you know, this is one of the fears of the meeting planning community as such, as some of the people I've talked to, um, is that, hey, if I do a virtual meeting uh, and I add that component, who's gonna wanna come to the live meeting, right? Well, there's reasons that you actually can increase attendance using this. And then lastly, engagement still seems to be what they're all looking for, and that's really what I think a lot of people are, 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 uh, are trying to get to right now. The, the, the boring you know, slide advances and you know, that kind of didactic presentations, they're becoming a thing of the past. People are looking for more ways to engage their audience, so uh, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that today. So really, we have found three main points to success. First is, the hybrid-friendly platform, you need a platform that is hybrid-friendly. And what do I mean by that? Um, it's one that, that serves well to both the live audience as well as the remote audience, right? So you're trying to basically convey the same type of message to both audiences, the live and the virtual, and not having a virtual uh, system that does a good job with that and can communicate and integrate um, can really be problematic because now you've got two separate uh, entities that you're dealing with, and it just, it really can become confusing. Oops, I clicked the slide and I shouldn't have. Hang on one second, let me go back. The second part is production provider. Understanding that you need a production provider on site to really help out with this situation, and they need to understand not just the live video. A lot of produ production companies out there, you know, some have struggled during the COVID times. I'll, I'll be honest, it's, it's been difficult. We, we, we deal with a lot of production companies and obviously the live events have gone you know, uh, quite down over the, over the COVID time. A lot of them have remanufactured themselves and become good virtual partners and figured out how to implement this. Some of them have not. So choosing that production partner for on-site and making sure that they understand that virtual component is really primary and key. And then last but not least, it always comes down to people. right? It always comes down to having a professional team that works with you that understands your needs. Right? All right. So enough of that. Let's get into actually talking about some of the things that go on with a hybrid meeting and some of the considerations that I think we've learned, that we've seen, that you know, really you should be thinking of if you're doing some of these hybrid meetings. So first and foremost, it's you know, what kind of meeting are you going to have? And what I mean by that is, are you, are you going to have a live presenter and a remote audience? That's kind of what I have right now. Um, but we do have a little surprise behind me here. We've got a, uh, uh, what we call the Zyvid Innovation Lab, and it's right behind me. Uh, we're gonna be going into that lab a little later, uh, but it'll show essentially the one right beneath it, which is a live presenter, a live audience, and a remote audience. So you have all these different combinations of considerations that you have to take in, into account. Like, are you going to pipe in a remote presenter? Are you going to have a live audience and a virtual audience? So all of these things need to be considered. They have to be communicated to your uh, uh, production provider and they really do need to be communicated as well to the virtual provider. Where do you put the camera, right? You need a camera now and you need sound. So all of these things need to be taken into consideration for when you're having these hybrid meetings. You put the camera in the back of the room, do you theater style, banquet style, banquet rounds, do you have a mobile cam that goes around? 
So all of these things really do come into, uh, into play when you're trying to plan out that meeting. So this slide really does talk about um, what I was talking about before, why uh, uh, I think and we've seen attendance increase when you add the virtual component. And the reason here is, is that you can use the content through the meeting um, in many different ways. So first off, you have the initial in-person event. All right? We all know that. We've all been to those. You go to the event, you, you shake hands, grip and grin, all that stuff. But then, if you've added that virtual component, you can broadcast that meeting live. So now you're adding attendees to that event, which is great. In addition, though, you can rebroadcast that event maybe a week and two weeks later and gain increased uh, uh, attendance, right? So now you're rebroadcasting that live. We call them sim lives, where you can simulate a live event two weeks later. You can get additional audience members in that regard and add to your attendance. And then finally, obviously, you've recorded the event. So you can release the, the recording to the world. And now you even added more members. And now it's enduring content. So all of these put together really does increase the attendance to your, to your meeting, rather than just having a single in-person event on you know, July 10th at 10 AM in the morning. And that's it, right? So now you can see why I think adding a virtual component really does increase your attendance. Including the remote audience. So this is a really big point. Um, I wanted to tell a little story here. So one of the guys that works here, um, you know, he says, hey, uh, Dave, he goes, you know, my kid's going to grade school. And he said, um, he's really having a tough time. And I said, really? And he said, yeah, he says, the best experience is obviously live, right? All the kids going to school, everybody, you know, attending, seeing everybody, listening to the teacher. And he said, um, the second best is when they're all virtual. So they're all sitting at home, they're all on the computers, they're all watching the teacher, what have you. He said, the, the third experience, which is completely the worst, is the half and half. It's when you have a virtual uh, uh, attendance for the, the kids and you have a live, you know, a couple of kids in the classroom. And he said, the problem is, he goes, my kid is texting his buddy and he's saying, hey, you know, tell the teacher to move the camera over a little bit. I can't see the board or, you know, I've, I've had four questions and nobody's answering my question. So they become a part of a forgotten crew. And um, it's one of the things I think that really does stand out in this new culture of, of uh, uh, hybrid events in that we really need to keep an eye on that. And we have a solution for it. Actually, um, you can have a solution for it, you know, even if you don't use us or what have you, but I recommend doing this, and it's called a virtual ambassador. And a virtual ambassador is a person that is at the live event, but really has responsibility for those virtual people, right? So if there's a question, if there's a comment, if there's something going wrong or what have you, that individual is their representative at the live event, and it really, really helps with the, the, the uh, uh, virtual members feeling like that they're part of that event, right? They can ask questions, they can get engaged, they can even go out this virtual ambassador and they can create conversations between people in the audience and say, hey, you know, we've got some virtual people here, did you wanna chat with them, all that stuff. So it really is a great idea. I, I recommend actually having that individual for, for all of your virtual hybrid meetings. Um, I, I mentioned this before, so, so choosing the AV partner, that's really important. Experience, consistency, having the right equipment as well, you know, the cameras, all of that stuff, uh, the encoders, because it all has to happen at that location, right? So doing all of this stuff really does make a difference, and I, 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 I can't stress it enough in, in terms of looking at that AV partner. Now we, we offer the complete solution at Zyvid here. We have our own equipment. We can go around uh, and talk to it. We'll talk a, a, a bit about that later, but now, what I want to do is talk a little bit about the Zyvid hybrid demo, right? Let's see how I'm doing on time. Oh my goodness, I'm doing great. So let's see, do we have any questions? Uh, let me see. Uh, can you change the configurations of the screen and presentation or are they only static? Actually, all of our screen presentations can change on the fly. We can move things around. We have the ability to change slide decks on the fly. All of that stuff can happen. Uh, does the platform uh, handle polling? Of course it does, and we are going to demonstrate that. Uh, slide transitions look great. That's fantastic. I'm glad you think so, Anthony. So, um, all right, let's get into it. Fantastic. Let's move along. So what we're going to cover here um, is Zyvid Pro. Uh, uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about Zyvid Pro, the platform. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about engagement and ROI, right, through our suite of engagement tools. Uh, we'll, we'll demonstrate a few of those. And then we're gonna show you Zyvid Pro Connect in a live environment right behind me in the Innovation Lab. So we'll see how that goes, right? Never know what happens with a live meeting. 
Uh, this is live. You never know what happens when you try something, but uh, I hope it'll work out for you. I hope you get kind of the idea of how a real hybrid meeting can work and how it can work with Zybit Pro. So first things, um, so this is a really interesting um, uh, part of our, our presentation, if you will, and this is what I think really makes us unique. Uh, we, we, our mantra is we present better, we help you present better, right? But the reason that, that, that is, we feel like we're a once in a generation disruptor. We have studied the art and science of presenting. We've looked at the psychological and cognitive studies that are out there, and we've looked at what makes something look pleasant, what makes something look good, right? There are intrinsic things that just make things pleasing to the eye. I mean, you, you, know, you look at the slide there on the right, the McDonald's. That's a good looking slide, right? There's a lot of color, a lot of vibrancy. There's a lot of things going on. Um, if you look at my presentation, I've got you know, a background that's got some circles in it. So, so this kind of, of look and feel is really important. And before we even started programming our application, we took a look at this and we did some serious study for about three months looking at what makes things look good. And our, our chief technologist, Tim Patch, he says, we challenge the status quo in everything we do. Our design and development team constantly seek to improve the user experience. And that's, we are looking at this whole thing from the attendee perspective. Um, a lot of our comp competitors might look at it from the, the operator's perspective, but we feel that when you do a large program, those attendees are the ones that really should have a great experience. And we've got a lot of, got a lot of comments from people uh, talking about just that. So it's really about that look and feel, right? So what do I mean by when, you know, this psychological look, right? Well, guess what? The NFL did the same exact thing, and they're a pretty big organization. They're a little bigger than we are. Um, but uh, they made some changes in 2019 uh, that they said they were going to institute split-screen commercial breaks. And if you look on the left there, you've got, um, you know, the Visa is advertising around an outline of a video that is still playing of the game, right? So you've got a football game that's in the bottom right-hand corner, but the whole reason that they're doing this is to keep people engaged. They're trying to keep the viewers engaged, right? Uh, here's another example. You've got uh, Volkswagen plays a video. They're actually playing a commercial there um, with the, the back of the coach showing his head, and um, you know the game continues. Got the score down below. Again, trying to keep the audience engaged. It's got to look good. It's got to feel, you know, uh, there has to be a continuity there, if you know, if you know what I mean. Uh, CNN actually does this as well. So you got Wolf Blitzer on the left. They do a real nice job at the layout, right? The, the ticker that goes across the bottom, we're going to show a little bit of that. Um, but all of this stuff really makes a difference when you start to put it together. So how do we help you do that, right? How do we help you um, as a client, and how do we help people that are trying to do these hybrid meetings, how do we help them brand themselves and keep people engaged? Well, one of the ways we do it is we go to your website or whatever and we find some pictures that go along with your look and branding. And here's an example of uh, S&P Global. We used uh, uh, some graphics across their website and we put them into the background of their web page or uh, their, their webcast, right? Um, so if you can see, we kind of muted it though uh, but they're there and they're in the background and it kind of makes their branding and their colors and their their special look and feel come through. Now while that's a real small thing, it's amazing what it does psychologically. Here's, here's some other examples of people that have used uh, uh, different layouts and different colors and different pictures. So that's kind of the branding side of it. What else do we do? We do also a dynamic interface movement. So you might have seen the slides move around the screen a little bit. So if not, um, can we make some of those slides move around the screen a smidge, right? What happens is, is we can move those slides depending upon how the presenter is presenting, right? If there is a really important slide that's got a lot of complicated information, that slide can go full screen. If there's a speaker that gets very dynamic and you know, starts to move his arms like I do, they can go full screen as well. So we have the ability to make these changes on the fly and we can change those configurations suited to how the presentation goes. So we've talked about a couple of different things to make you present better. Um, the other thing that you can do is, you know, so we've talked about branding, we've talked about moving things around the screen, layout. Now the last thing that we've implemented that is very unique to our platform is the engagement tools. And these engagement tools are really what make us unique. There are a series of tools that really engage the audience. Now the first ones I'm gonna show you are what we call passive engagement tools. You don't have to do anything. You just kick back, you look at the screen, you watch, 
all is good. And the first one we're going to show is my biography, right? So as they push the button for the biography, my biography is seamlessly going to come out from the side. Everything's going to kind of shrink down a little bit. And you'll see exactly what and who I am, right? It's got all the information. Maybe it has my picture. It's got some CVs. If, if I have a download biography, you can put links in there. We've had people put videos in there. But all of this seamlessly happens while I'm presenting, right? Um, the next one is Ticker. Now, this is probably the most widely used engagement tool that we use. Um, the Ticker is something where you can fire this Ticker during the program. You can type information in you know, seconds before you fire this Ticker. So if there's an issue with the presenter where they forget to say something or they mention an 800 number uh, or a web page or something like that and they, they go by it very quickly, you may want to put that information out in the Ticker. Right? So the Ticker goes across the bottom just like a little ticker tape, and we've opened one now. Um, and you can see this is a really powerful tool for our clients to basically send information during the program. We've had some clients use as many as 30, 40 different tickers, different languages. You can put links in there. All sorts of things can, can make change. So very, very, very powerful engagement tool. We can also do social media. So we can engage social media with our platform. And the cool thing about our platform is all of these things you're looking at now, we, we basically left open the bio, we left open the ticker at the bottom, and we're going to open, we open now the social media. Um, all of these things are technically different web pages. And that's what makes our system so powerful. We can basically bring in any type of external content to do that type of, of, of presentation. So, you know, what you're watching now is um, uh, we call it Wall.io. It's an external company that allows you to show all of your social media. And that can be brought right into our presentation. We can open it and close it uh, anytime we want. But each of these little areas, these panels, if you will, they're all separate web pages. Uh, really a powerful way to do it. So let's clean that up. And uh, oh, the next one, let's close some of those down if you don't mind. The next one is Pulse. So this is a really cool feedback. So this is the first of the interactive feedbacks. This allows you, as an audience member, down in the bottom right-hand corner, to click on a heart and that heart pops up whether you like what I'm talking about or not. And the real power of this is that it marks in time when you actually clicked on that button. So you can go back to your presentation, you can find out what the audience members liked or disliked, and you can adjust your presentation for the next time you get it, or next time you give it. So this Pulse feature is really, really powerful for going back over your presentation to see what people liked, where you might want to adjust your presentation, and again, helping you present better. Right? All right, great. So now we are into our brand new engagement tool called Zyvid Pro Connect. So I want to talk a little bit about this. Let's see. Uh, oh, someone asked me about closed caption. Actually, we didn't have closed caption running today, but we do have closed caption, Jennifer. We've had it, we can have it in multiple languages. It opens up um, uh, right at the bottom of the screen. There'll be a little CC. You simply click on it and it opens up a caption panel, just like the panels that uh, uh, you saw, like my bio panel, you saw that come out. Um, that bio panel could be the closed caption uh, ongoing and running, uh, running tally. But you can have different languages, you can have different uh, uh, text running across, different links, that kind of thing. So full closed captioning capabilities. Let's see, any other questions? No, but please, ask me questions. I'll try to answer them during the program. So let's talk a little bit about this Zyvid Pro Connect. So we saw the, the need um, out in the, uh, uh, you know, the world today as, as we see the, the hybrid meetings, right? That, that virtual and live meeting. Um, but we thought, you know, there's not a connection between the live members of the audience and those remote members. So we developed this application. And basically, it's not an app. It is part of our platform. So you don't have to download anything. It works through your mobile device. So you engage from the mobile device. And it's made for the people in the live audience. right? Um, it creates one audience report for all the data. So picture this. You've got people that are holding their mobile devices in a live audience, which you're going to see in just a moment. Um, and they are getting the same polls and the same interactivity as the virtual people. Right? It works with very large audiences, very small audiences, very simple and easy to use. You can use gamification through it, polling, word cloud, chat, Q 
Q&A, and we've got a myriad of other uh, uh, devices and engagement tools that work through the app as well. But what it does is it brings everyone together. It, it, it creates that cohesive team that I was talking about when you have that separation of live and virtual. So let me show you how it actually kind of works, right? Let's talk a little bit about this. So you've got your live audience members, and you've got your virtual audience members, right? The, the relationship between the two of them, um, the instructions are obviously the, the, the virtual audience is watching it through the Zybid Pro platform. We need to give instructions to the live audience members. So what we tell the live audience is we put up a simple QR code in front of the live audience on the, on the projection screen, and you're gonna see that in a moment, and they hold up their phones, they go to the little photo thing, and they aim it at the, 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 uh, uh, the QR code, and it takes them to the Zybid Pro Connect location. They enter in their information, right? They type in their first name, last name, what have you. And then they, they see a screen that will have an engagement button on it. And you're actually going to get a chance to do this. So I'm kind of walking you through it now. Uh, that engagement button allows you to participate in the polls, the gamification, and all of the engagement tools that we have here at uh, Zybit Pro. You can ask questions, you can chat with people, so all of these things can be done through the application as it is basically another member of the Zybid Pro community, right? So what we're gonna do now, um, and by the way, that creates this one single audience, which I'm talking about. You know, creating that one single audience and the one single flavor and one single report is really important. Uh, oh, we got a question here, hold on. So what kind of bandwidth do your remote participants need to participate in one of these flashy multi-panel presentations? Uh, I, like, I like the word flashy. I'm going to add that to my, uh, my repertoire, Maureen. I appreciate that. Uh, very low, actually. In fact, you can view one of our programs on an iPhone, an iPad. Uh, you really don't need a lot of bandwidth. Our system has the ability to adjust itself depending upon your bandwidth. So if you're in a real bad area, our system will go down to the lowest bandwidth that we broadcast at. We broadcast actually across four different bandwidths. Very high resolution, medium resolution, low resolution, and audio only. So if the system can't get audio, you're in a pretty bad location, but it will automatically switch between those. I've, I've, you know, I've done it myself where I get into a bad area and the video goes a little, a little wonky, a little, little crusted, and then it basically updates itself and brings me back when I get into a better area. So really, really great. Uh, oh, so let's get back. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try something a little bit different here. Oh, let me see. So we are going to exit this room. Um, I am going to go into our innovation lab, and we've got some cameras set up there that's emulating a, uh, a hybrid room. We've got some, um, I don't know if they're uh, eager participants, but they are Zybid Pro employees that are mock uh, uh, sitting in the meeting. Uh, waiting for me to get there, and they're all there with their mobile phones. And when I show up, we're going to walk through exactly what happens during a live meeting so that you can kind of get a flavor for it. Um, you at home, though, what we're going to allow you to do is participate as well. So I'm asking you to get your, get your mobile device out, whether it be a, an Android or an iPhone or a, uh, an iPad or whatever. Get your mobile device out, and basically what I'm going to have do is, uh, where, should I do it now? Okay, yeah. So we're going to have a panel come out, and you're going to aim for the QR code, right? So you get your mobile device out, you go to photos like you're taking a picture, and you know, go to your camera, and you aim it at this QR code. Most of you have done this in the restaurants because of COVID, and you know, you've probably seen these QR codes to get the menu. Aim it there. There should be a little button that shows up. You click the button, and it takes you to the login of the Zybid Pro. Just use your same um, uh, email address. It's probably make it easier so you don't have to enter in all that information again. Use your same email address and then press launch and you should see uh, the Zybid Pro Connect application with a little person on it uh, with a little uh, a Wi-Fi signal above uh, their head uh, and you can do Q&A and chat and all that stuff. So we'll get in there and we'll show you a little bit on how to use it um, and hopefully all of this works. Um, I, <laughs> as I say, you never know, right? This is a live event, things can change and this is a lab environment so, so I know all, everything works in the lab there but again, we're, we're kind of emulating it. And as you, as you look at it as a, as a virtual participant, you're also being a live participant. So there might be some issues with regards to timing, but I think, it'll, I think it should work out just fine. So I'm going to be gone for about 30, 40 seconds. And the next video you can see, we're going to play a, a little video on how the Zybid Pro app works. Uh, the guys put together, which is really great. Um, and I'll be with you in about 50 seconds.
So great. So we are now in the, Livid, uh, the, the Zyvid Pro uh, lab. And basically, this is where we do most of our testing. Uh, we have some participants here uh, that are aiming. Now, you can't really see the, uh, the screen very well. We, again, this is our lab. But what happens is, is, if you can just make out, we've got the big QR code up on the screen for all of the live audience participants for them to aim their mobile devices up, get the QR code, and basically visit the Zyvid Pro Connect engagement tool. Um, so hopefully you did that at home, and if you're having any issues, um, you can go back to your virtual and, and maybe type into the tech support, we can help you. Um, refreshing also sometimes helps if you get into any problems, but again, remember, you're emulating both a live and a virtual person at home, so you know it, it can get a little bit confusing, but I hope you can get the idea that all the participants here are aiming their phones up at the screen, and they are now part of the meeting that you are watching virtually, right? So now we're bringing this whole group together, if you will. So um, we're really excited about this. Uh, and what we wanted to demonstrate today uh, is our ability to engage with the engagement tool. So you saw the little video that played while I walked over here, and um, you know it kind of gave you an idea of how the application works. But what we're going to do now is we're going to ask a poll of the entire audience, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the, uh, uh, the guys to open a poll. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. We're going to do gamification first. Uh, see, uh, this is a live meeting. You never know what can happen. And I blew it. I didn't look at the slide. So gamification first. Now, the way gamification works, um, this is kind of cool. This is a Zyvid Pro uh, uh, exclusive. Basically, what we ask is it's similar to a poll. We open the poll. And in gamification, it allows members to answer a question quickly. So you've got to answer this fast. So the question is, um, a hybrid event is an event that, and there should be a couple of different answers there. And we ask everybody to, oh, excuse me, you have to hit that little engagement button. I apologize, my goodness. You have to hit the engagement button and press it, and up will pop the game uh, 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 question. So you saw it. If I look at my phone, let me see. So I can participate as well. Great. Awesome. So I'm participating as well. You simply hit that engagement button. That's the little individual with the, uh, with the wireless uh, uh, overview on them. And once you engage, it should pop up the gamification. You answer the question as fast as you can. And then what we're going to do is we're going to show some of these results. Let's see here. Oh, great got some of the remote individuals that are doing it. So now if you think about it, you in virtual land are answering this gamification twice, right? You're, you're answering the poll twice. Uh, so essentially, you're answering it once on your computer, and you're answering it also once through the Zyvid Pro Live app. Now, get, granted, you won't have this Zyvid Pro Live app open while you're watching it remotely as a virtual uh, uh, participant but the individuals that are live here in the audience. I'm just trying to give you a little flavor of what they are seeing, right? So let's give it a couple more seconds, and we will then close the poll. Uh, let's give it about 10, 10 more seconds. We'll see if everybody starts to... Uh... So it looks like Katie has become the winner. Some people are getting bounced out. That's good. We've got Kelly. Cam, we've got Melissa Wolf, Jennifer Russo, and Raya Callaghan. Good. Awesome. So all of you have participated. So let's close that poll. Uh, and we are showing the results now. Now, granted, you're not going to see results on the uh, Zyvid Pro Connect app because essentially you're supposed to be sitting in the audience and you'll see those results up on the screen, right? So the app is only made for your input. You understand that, right? So, so we're not pushing the results back to your iPhone or, or, or device or your uh, Android device. You'll see those up on the screen so that you can participate in this live audience, right? Great. So you get the idea. Let's, um, let's try, uh, what do we have next? I think we're going to go to polling. So we'll do a quick poll, right? So I'm opening a poll now. So um, what you can do now is uh, you can go and press the button. It should allow you to now see the poll. And you can answer uh, uh, that poll in the same way that you did the gamification, right? If you press that engagement button in the center uh, after, and now they'll come, come available. We'll give that a, a good uh, 20 or 30 seconds here to, to have everybody try and respond. Good. 
Okay, looks like we have, uh, the biggest issue I have with virtual events is keeping it engaging. Wow, see, there you go. What have I been talking about all, all meeting, right? Is trying to keep it engaging. So we've got this, this concept of engagement and these engagement tools. This is really a creative way to try and bring the audience together. I can't tell you how many engagement tools that we, are, we have in the works in this lab right now uh, that we're trying to bring to market and make, make the, the experience for our clients more engaging. It's a real, um, it's, it's actually quite fun. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that we can do. We have gamification. Uh, we're even looking at maybe a video arcade game before meetings to try and get people to get to the meetings on time uh, and having a competition before the meeting starts. So there's all these different ideas that can happen uh, with an engaging, uh, and get these engagement tools. So uh, let's bring up, uh, so we've got the, the uh, we'll close that poll now. And um, last but not least, we've got word clouds. We're not gonna do a word cloud. Um, I'm running a little short on time. So you get the flavor. Um, everybody that's in the room here, turn around, look at that back left camera, wave and say thank you. <laughs> so we appreciate everybody here at Zyvid helping out. Uh, I'm gonna make my way back into the room. We'll finish up with some other engagement tools that are pretty exciting uh, and we'll close, up the, uh, we'll close up the meeting. I got another five or so meeting minutes, okay? Thank you so much. Great, so it looks like I'm back. Awesome, so I hope everything worked out all right. Again, um, these are some of the uh, devices that we're using, uh, some of the things. Wow, looks like I got a whole bunch of questions. Let me try to uh, check it out. Uh, we've got test, we've got Q&A. Um, how do you handle the lag with remote presenters when devices are not in time? For example, my phone is 30 seconds ahead of my PC right now viewing this? Ah, very good question. So timing is a real big issue, right? Um, the way we, we combat that is every single command that goes down to our device or your device is pushed through the video stream. So the video stream is the ultimate timing device, right? So when I advance a slide right now, the video stream carries that signal out to the device and if it never gets to that device, let's say you have a lag or you, know, you have a, a small blip in your video or there's a, you know, a timing issue or what have you, until that video plays, the, the command will not be executed. If that makes kind of sense, it's a little hard to understand, but basically the video is the ultimate timing device. So if you have a computer that's 10 seconds behind your iPhone, each will actually have the slide occur and advance at the right time because the signal to advance the slide is being carried through that video command. It's a very exclusive and it's a difficult process. Again, this is another uh, pretty cool feature of our, of our platform that makes it uh, different. Um, showing the poll is open, Messaging the Action Center is a great way to cover someone who didn't get the, the pop-up. Oh yeah, great. Um, let's see, a uh, question from Amy, how do you handle the lag? So I'm sorry, I'm reading some of these questions right as I got back. Usually I have a little time to read some of them, but. They're great, so everybody connected. It looks like some of this work. Again, it's a little difficult to understand how that live app worked in virtual land, if you will, um, but is, if you can imagine holding the app in your hand while you're at the live meeting and participating and you know, responding, you, know, you all responded to, to most of the quiz questions and, the, and, and, and polling and what have you um, while you were on your PC. Um, all the people in the audience can do the same. So it's a real, it's actually kind of a thing. We, we, we thought we'd give it a try. A couple of guys said, no, nah, don't do that. It's just gonna get complicated. But look, you know, you try things. This is what we're about. We are trying to make the user experience better. 
We are trying to make the attendees experience better. And this is really what we do. Our experience with meetings, if you look at the slide here, um, you know, we own all of our own product. We own our own cameras, we own our own audio, we own our own lighting, um, and we have now this worldwide reach. Um, but then we started in this hybrid space. We understand working in live events. You only get one chance to make a first impression. Uh, and it's very important that these things go right. So this is a really cool demonstration. We believe that this is probably the next level of education. I've only got like two or three more slides, but please take a look at this. This is really cool. The 3D model um, is our opinion, in our opinion, is really how people are going to learn. And the, and the concept behind this is um, we were really taking a look at um, what's going on in the industry. Again, we're, we're really into not just the virtual broadcasting industry, but the, the, it, you know, our, our, our lives as a whole. And what has changed is people are changing the way that they interact, right? Movies are being outplayed by video games. And the reason is, is that people can control their destiny in a video game, right? They can control their environment. And that's the way people are going to start to learn. And we believe that this application, as you're looking at now, this is a video or actually a, an interactive 3D model of the space station. And you can move it around with your mouse and it's taken over your full screen. I'm still talking behind it, so I can give you instructions, swipe it to the right, swipe it to the left. Um, all of that stuff can really still occur um, and give people a new way of learning, rather than just looking at a didactic presentation of PowerPoint and you know, a slide and that kind of thing. So this is truly the future. Um, let's close this one, which is also cool because I have control. If you close it, um, now, Let's, uh, let's see, let's move it to the next slide. Um, here's something that a lot of our pharmaceutical clients are taking a look at. So 3D renderings of you know, human lungs. So let's, let's fire that now. Um, you can see this is a really cool rendering of lungs that you can move around. Um, we can put these together very quickly, very easily. These 3D models though are interactive, right? And they allow the participants to interact with what's going on rather than just sitting back in their chair and watching a didactic presentation. Again, that concept of engagement, we are really trying to take that to the next level. Um, so all of this is just part and parcel to getting people engaged, and that is really what Zybin Pro is all about. All right, so let's close that and we'll finish up. Um, I really appreciate all of you coming. I really appreciate everyone attending the meeting. I went a little over time, I apologize. Uh, but I hope you got a flavor of what Zyvid Pro is about, what hybrid meetings are about, and how they can really, really be interactive and engaging. Um, and back to those three main points. It's about a hybrid friendly, friendly platform. Even if you don't use Zyvid Pro, please make sure that the platform is hybrid friendly. Um, and make sure that your production provider knows what they're doing. Uh, that's a very important part of, of what's going on in this day and age. Uh, and last but not least, as we all know, it comes down to great people. Uh, so. All of those things get the checkbox from the Zyvid Pro people. Uh, and uh, I appreciate you all attending today. Uh, I hope it was informative. I hope it was exciting. I hope you got a flavor of what we do. Uh, and I hope to see you again.